Power tools use many ball bearings to allow various components to rotate. Over time, a ball bearing will wear and begin to fail. A bearing that is failing will usually give warning, often with a squeaking or squealing sound. Replacing a ball bearing is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Soja. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless drills, kitchen mixers, outdoor drills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the depth stop indicator block. It's secured with two screws. I'll rotate it out of the way so it's clear of the coil recoil spring. There are two nuts that secure the coil spring to the drill press. I'm going to remove the outer nut. Next, I need to remove the tension from the coil spring. So I'm going to loosen the outer nut while holding the coil spring firmly against the drill press. You need to take care here because the coil spring is under a lot of tension. I've backed the nut off about 3 eighths of an inch away from the coil spring. Now I'm going to take a screwdriver with my hands clear of the coil spring and pull the spring away from the drill press housing. This will remove the tension. Now I can remove the nut and pull the coil spring away from the drill press. Now I can remove the feed shaft. As I pull the feed shaft away from the drill press, the quill will also come away from the housing. Next I need to remove the taper that secures the chuck to the spindle. To do that, I'll use a drift punch. The drill press came with a drift punch. If you've lost it or don't have one, you can find these online uh, from specialty tool shops. The drift punch fits through this opening in the quill and spindle. Once it's in place, sitting on top of the taper, I'll use a hammer to tap on the drift punch and that'll pop the taper out of the spindle. Now I need to remove the spindle from the quill. The spindle is secured to the quill with a special flat nut. As I remove the nut, the spindle will want to spin inside the quill. So I'll again insert the drift punch through the quill and spindle. That'll keep the spindle from rotating as I remove the nut. The special nut has four notches milled into it. I'll place a screwdriver on one of the notches and then tap the screwdriver with a mallet to remove the nut. Now I can remove the nut from the spindle. The washer. This is a special toothed washer. And a plain flat washer beneath it. With the nut and washers removed, now I can pull the drift punch away from the assembly and I'll use my rubber mallet to tap the spindle away from the quill. Now I can go ahead and remove the bearing from the quill. There's a couple of ways to do this. 
you can use a long socket extension to do this. You would place the socket extension through the upper bearing and on the inner race of the lower bearing and then use a hammer or a mallet to tap the bearing free. Another method is with a blind bearing puller. If you have one of these, it's an easier way to remove the bearing because it pulls it evenly rather than tapping on one side and then the other. To use the blind bearing puller, I insert it into the bearing, tighten it up until it engages with the inner race, then I attach the slide hammer, and I use the slide hammer to pull the bearing free. Now I can install the new bearing. I'll place it inside the quill, and then I'm going to use a punch to tap it into place. Just work my way around the bearing so it goes in evenly. I want to make sure that I'm only tapping on the outer race and being careful not to damage the shields. Now I'll reinstall the shaft into the new bearing. And likely your upper bearing also came free. If it didn't come free, it'll probably at least need to be reset against the shoulder inside the quill. So I'll place the bearing over the shaft and into the quill. This bearing goes in fairly easily. And again, I'll use my punch to tap the bearing in the rest of the way. And now I'll re-secure the spindle. First, the flat washer. Then the toothed washer. And notice there's a pin that indexes against the spindle on one part of the washer. I'll just slide that down any one of the grooves on the spindle. I'll again insert the drift punch so the spindle won't rotate and thread the nut into place. I'll tighten up the nut. As I tighten the nut, I want to align one of the teeth on that toothed washer with one of the notches on the nut. And then I'll bend that tooth up so the nut can't come free. Now I'll reinstall the chuck. This shaft extending from the chuck has a taper milled onto it, and there's a matching taper inside the spindle. And those tapers are what hold the chuck into place. To reinstall it, I need to make sure that the taper on this spindle and the spindle inside the quill are both clean and free of any grease. Once everything has been cleaned, I insert the chuck taper into the spindle, then I'll open the chuck, 
so that the gauze are up inside the chuck body, and now use a rubber mallet to secure the chuck tightly into the spindle. Now I can reassemble the quill assembly and the feed shaft. First, I'll insert the quill into the drill press. The shaft needs to align with the upper pulley. So I'll rotate the pulley around until they engage. And then I need to push the quill up into the press until I can see the gearing through the hole for the feed shaft. And now I'll install the feed shaft, rotating it until the gears align. Now I can reinstall the coil spring. I'll align the coil spring with the slot that's milled in the feed shaft. I'll thread one of the retaining nuts on until it's again about 3 eighths of an inch away from the spring. Now I need to tension the coil spring. For this part, you'll want to wear a sturdy pair of gloves. If the spring comes loose as you're tensioning it, it can badly hurt you. You'll rotate the spring around to tension it. To determine the right direction, I'll hold the quill up a little bit, and as I rotate it, if it's pushing the quill down, that's the wrong direction. I want it to pull the quill up. So I'll rotate it counterclockwise. I'll rotate it around, and when I need to reposition my hands, I can just push the spring against the indexing notch on the housing. Another trick that I find helpful is to insert a small screwdriver through the ear on the spring. It just gives me another point of control as I tension the spring. Every so often, I'll go ahead and tighten up the nut so that the spring won't come free from the housing. And I'll go ahead and test the quill. I want to tension the spring until we'll always pull the quill back up. That still seems a little soft. It's kind of sticking at certain points. So I'll tighten the spring just a little bit more. I want to go even just a little bit more. The spring tension seems good, so now I'll focus on tightening up the nut that secures the coil spring to the drill press. If I get it too tight, the quill will be locked in place and won't retract. Too loose, I run the risk of the coil spring coming away from the housing and losing its tension. 
I'll make adjustments to the nut, tightening it or loosening it as needed until the quill operates smoothly. Seems just a little bit stiff, so I'll slightly loosen it. But again, I don't want to get it too loose or the coil spring housing can come free from the indexing notch and then I'll lose all the tension. So that's still nice and tight and the quill operates smoothly. So I think it's set. Now I'll place the second nut onto the spindle. And I'll tighten it up against the first. As I tighten the outer nut up, I'll need to hold the inner nut so it doesn't rotate. And you'll need a fairly thin wrench, or in this case I found some pliers that'll fit against that nut, so I can hold it while I tighten the second nut. One last check on the quill. And it's ready to go. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the indicator block. Before I tighten it up all the way, I just want to make sure that the scale doesn't rub against it. That seems good. And now you know how to install a new ball bearing on your power tools. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.